Hi, so I'm going to talk about uh, Jenspire, which is a library that I've written over the past few years and my previous work uh, to generate POSIX shell uh, and to do DevOps in OCaml. So who am I? Uh, so I work at Obsidian Systems, mostly on Tezos and cryptocurrency, but before that, I was at Mount Sinai at the Hammer Lab. Uh, the Hammer Lab has done three talks at Compose. I think we were there every year, and I did two of them. Um, and also at the Mount Sinai, I also did like some institute level consultancy, which was also doing sysadmin DevOps for like biologists and all that kind of stuff. So it was about computational biology and uh, cancer immunotherapy in particular. The idea is like uh, biologists want to run like very big computations. Everything is piped together with like Python, Perl, Shell, and um, your actual infrastructure is moving all the time because it depends on your funding. You can use the, lo the local cluster or like go to the cloud, come back to the lo some local machine because everything was broken. Uh, and depending on funding, you have to like switch cloud providers. And um, it's not just software, it's also so it's software that has been like written by postdocs and PhD students over like decades and data that has been put publicly or like shared with like collaborators. So there's a lot of like DevOps to get, to pre-compute a bunch of things and give it to like an interactive exploration session for the users. Biologists love Python and so I Python notebooks but also do like a bunch of R or like, Uh, are or like just shell script that are like pretty crazy. Um, so uh, the approach I had was like, okay, I'm the only one doing DevOps for all those people. I don't want to fix everybody's problems over and over and over. So the idea was to build tools for them to like set up their own infrastructure and me be able to move fast to adapt those tools to the given infrastructure they are trying to build. Uh, it could be like, I don't know, like Google Cloud Kubernetes clusters with like a NFS servers type all linked together. You need to set up those things very fast and maybe the next month will be like some AWS thing that changes everything the way, the way you work with. Um, so you start doing DevOps and you're like, oh, I wanna like, I mean, basically it's just running Unix commands. So what's wrong with like just a good old OCaml or Haskell exec call that you don't need to escape anything or like, it's just pure strings that work well. <clears throat> you choose everything, everything works well though. But then, okay, I'm running this on my laptop and I want to like be connected over SSH to like my cluster or like Google Cloud. So I need to like put that command inside an SSH call. So then you're like that those two layers, you call SSH and you have like made that fun that shell command that actually is well escaped because we have functions to escape arguments. But already there, that's a, there's already a problem. Like when that thing fails, be with a like non-zero exit code, who actually failed? Is, was, it the, what is, was it the installation or was it SSH because of a connection problem? So you start hitting that down that rabbit hole. Um, that is on this one, that's all. So get through my first talk at Compose, like 2015, I think, was that both flange I presented. And already there, in there, there is that ugly string to like run commands over SSH uh, and capture the, the, return, the return values of the actual command that is run, return zero, so that we know that the, SSH, the global SSH call should, should succeed. And then we can like unpack everything. Uh, of course, there is the other option of like reading all the man pages of everything and trying to find, figure out what are the written codes. That doesn't work. Like nothing is well specified, and there is a bunch of conflict. Uh, and it keeps getting worse. Um, that was a bug we had. Like first QC is like some bioinformatics tool to like make quality control on the on data sets, and that thing just makes the Java on on Debian and Ubuntu like just like fun. Oh. It only works with the open GTK, and that's that was the most common Stack Overflow answers that people go to. 
like, oh, how do I install the Oracle JDK without interactive? Because the thing asks you to like answer a license, ag license agree agreement. So everybody ends up on this Stack Overflow question, and everybody starts putting like those pipe, debconf, whatever, into like that thing, and then force the force the license agreement to be accepted. So it gets worse and worse like this, and everybody is like putting strings into their like as shell scripts to like build them on top of each other. Uh, what's the problem? What's this one? Ah, yeah, that one was a comment that was also there when I started actually not doing with an MD DSL. So you start like having those little bits of pieces of scripts that are actually programs, like a for loop to actually wait for something because the wait option of that comment doesn't work. Um, then that one at the bug because Debian, you pass that to sudo and Debian and some old version that people were still using, just removes all the new lines from your script. So like, I don't know if you imagine like going to debug that error message. Uh, I have Nix that I've started using since I'm at Obsidian. You know, like it's also a bunch of like inline shell scripts in like strings. Uh, the nice thing also that's very fun about Nix is that the string interpolation syntax is the same syntax as the shell you're using for like variables. Uh, and that's in Nix packages, by the way. It's not like some custom thing. Uh, okay, let's take a step back. This is going too crazy, and I'm wasting my time fixing those bugs. Uh, what we do when we are like a functional, type functional programmer kind of mindset, what do we do? We make embedded DSLs that compile to the thing, and then we never ever again look at the thing that we were generating. So that's how Genspire got started. Uh, right now it's at the second, the third version, it was 0, 1, and 2. Uh, so it's a simple typed embedded DSL in OCaml uh, based on a JDT, so then like old school, like it's not a type tagless final thing like I presented in 2017. Uh, and then a bunch of like standard library constructs built on top of it. Um, it now has two compilers, the main one, which like generates pure shell, pure POSIX shell, that are like expressions. You can even like make those like one-liners that go over the maximum uh, size of an argument you can give to SH. That works well on uh, most cases, but maybe old shells are buggy. They don't man they manage to like parse those things. Uh, for example, Mac OS X, it's stuck in bash 3. Point something because of the GPL v2, v3 change. Uh, so it doesn't work. So I started another compiler, which is much lower because it uses a bunch of temp files to like, like flatten everything. But actually it works like really everywhere. Like I will show later like Darwin version, very old. And I also implemented a couple of optimization based passes, which is like, you know, like we often say like yeah, objects in OCaml are almost only useful for like uh, AST visitors, like uh, open recursion. That is one of those. And then I, the, I implemented a couple of passes on top of that. Uh, so that's what the API looks like from above. Um, everything is like that edsl.t with a type variable. That is the type of the thing that you are mani manipulating. Um, some examples. So they're all on the small examples web page of the documentation. We'll come back later to how it's made. Uh, so this is a very simple example, just calling exec without having to deal with uh, escaping. So it's like revealing an exec call on sh in shell. Uh, another example, a bit more uh, complicated. So call is like the version of Excel, but you can give strings from the ESL. So like the results of other comments, for example. You can get the standard output of another command. And then there is a pipe operator. So you are like building up those shell, shell scripts with like nice constructs in that type. Uh, it handles pretty well. Like now, I'm pretty sure there's no more bug in that. Handling null characters in the middle. I will also come back to that in a whole rabbit hole. Um, yeah, and even catches like some, if you give, a null character in a place that you cannot use, 
we will come back to later. So we cannot call uh, a command with a with a new character in the middle. That fails at compile time because it's statically statically found. Uh, and then you have like classic imperative programming things like you can make if then else loops with a while conditions things like this string comparison concatenation. Uh, there's a notion of lists that is still quite limited, but it's useful. Uh, POSIX shell doesn't have arrays, by the way. Arrays are a bash thing. So it's a whole implementation on top of uh, some pretty crazy stuff. Uh, speaking of crazy stuff, so how is it inside? Uh, there are many things that are like really ugly and you want to see them only once in your life and then never, once it is well debugged, not touch it ever. Uh, the representation of strings, the only way to like make that work is like with octal representations because shell commands and so on and like constructs you just eat random characters or they don't handle new lines or things like this properly. So everything and the only way to like properly use only tools that are on POSIX only to manage that representation is using octal. So there are like some calls to set and not that have to be like pure POSIX from the uh, from the standard. Uh, there's a way of like failing. This is kind of some of an, somewhat of a no notion of exceptions. You can like jump outside of your program and catch the fail using trap and, and kill inside. Uh, there are two string types. I'm going to like just come back to that later. There are byte arrays and C strings. And uh, like the code is made for like being readable and like testable. Uh, the scripts can be pretty slow for what they're doing, but Usually we don't care. The, most of the like the execution of the script is negligible compared to like installing a package or anything when you're doing DevOps. Like accessing the internet is like extremely slow, much much slower. Uh, so that two string types thing that comes from there at the very beginning. Uh, when you pass arguments to a program, it's actually a C string, something a not terminated string, and from that original scene, like the whole mess of like having C strings and byte arrays being different even at the shell level. That's why it's there. The first version of Zenspire was not dealing with that properly. I presented it at OCaml 2017. Uh, so that was the future work. So I implemented that later. Uh, the two types are actually accessible from the library, but uh, the main one you use when you use VDSL is the byte array and all the conversions are hidden when you need them. And then I have an optimization pass in case you have added like the conversion and conversion pipe together. So that those are eliminated at the optimization time. Um, so for example, this is how it looks to like convert those strings to octal and back. Um, and this is pure POSIX shell, shell scripting. Um, yeah, the redirections, you can redirect as many. In shell, you can actually redirect any uh, file descriptor you want. It's just kind of weird. And, uh, and the DSL makes a nice API on top of it. Um, then there's a lot of like overall added complexity because of like forcing errors at the right place and giving our messages where we want them. Like you can give many things, any string that are supposed to be a, an int and the shell will be happy for many things and then fail in like some weird way. So the idea is to like make those errors happen at the time you want and make an error message that makes some, makes some sense. Uh, ah yeah, I know many things are like also because, uh, for example, getting an environment variable, it's not just the name of the variable, it's the name of the variable from the EDSL, so it could be the result of a command, like the concatenation of like the output of something and something that you want to get involved. So there's a lot of like, uh, complexity because of that, the strings that have to be like handled also within the DSL again. Uh, so then why after all that thing that you don't want to ever see again, what's actually interesting is like documentation and testing. So the project is on GitHub and its own Travis CI runs on Linux and Mac. Um, then on top of that, the documentation is on GitLab so it uses the GitLab CI thing to like run it with as many shells as possible you can find on Ubuntu. 
and uh, generate the documentation at the same time. So the test results are also on the website. You can see what goes and so depending on, so it's a pairings of compiler options and the uh, shell available on, on Ubuntu. The Ubuntu has those old like, you know, like KSH implementations that are like not fully posit. <clears throat> That's why some tests fail because I don't know, KSH from like 1993 doesn't handle many things actually. Uh, but at least we have a trace of where it works and where it doesn't. And uh, all the common shells and unices work. Um, then on the tests are actually a code generator that generates a make file and a gazillion of shell scripts. So the idea is that you can like just take that directory and put it anywhere else and run your test on like some exotic thing that doesn't need OCaml. So it's an example of like uh, making an open WRT, you know, it's that operating system for like uh, routers. Uh, you make a VM on ARM on, with QMU and uh, then run your test inside that. Uh, actually, so then I started building bigger tests that are like more like proof of concept and like making bigger scripts out of that. One of them is like making those VMs. So one of the tests is a generator for like building those VMs with QMU. So that's where the, this is that AMD64 Darwin that runs that very old version of Darwin so that you have like the even worse tool set as Mac OS X. So if it works there, it has a good chance of working on Mac OS X. And so far it, it goes. Uh, <clears throat> other bigger examples I've made I've, over the years because of something I needed and uh, why not make it with that? So that that cost, which is a way of like making your little system D or like process manager with throwing shell commands at GNU screen, GNU screen. Uh, it's pretty useful if you are like dealing with like little servers or like processes that are long running. And also that multi git, a tool for like visualize and see like many, many GitHub repos. Uh, like, what's, the, yeah, so that you're not supposed to read that. Uh, but that's my laptop that I've had for like nine months. All my GitHub repos, and that's the, out the output of multi status. So it tells you like branches you have forgot to push and, uh, or like modified files in like other repos and so on. So when you have like a billion like me, it's very useful. <coughs> the doc is also built by the CI for even older versions of the of the library. Or you can also bid for like a, make the website for the, the given branch you want when you're developing. Uh, it also builds that web demo. So I don't know if you saw the examples before. They were like a, there was a try online button. So there is a <coughs> a website the build for every also version of the Genspire that's uh, that the documentation is built for. Uh, it's a just for camel Thai XML React client side only web app. Um, the camel top level that compile that compiles the camel and runs it on top of JavaScript is inside a web worker. So just like a, it was like uh, web threads that you can talk to without blocking the the UI. <coughs> It runs both compilers. You can even like download this, the output scripts. You can even download the output scripts and uh, share. There is a share button. So you can make it that huge URL, your URI with the, with your script and like give it to your friends. Uh, the source is there. That's how it looks. Uh, you have the text editor on the left <coughs> and the output of the compilers and of the type checking. Uh, Another example I think I have. Uh, yeah, I ha I'm adding type error, so that's how it looks. Simulation error, when I, that's a syntax error. And that's the type error again. So yeah, that's how it looks. You see the ready button on top of there, it's like becomes orange for a little bit. That's when the thing is like sending to the web worker and waiting for the, for the result of the evaluation while you can keep typing. Uh, so yeah. Uh, more funny things to do are more at the, I mean, unless you want to write another compiler for like, I don't know, uh, what's called batch in, in Windows. <laughs> uh, there's also like a lot of nice things that to be done like to like properly wrap 
many things at the library level for the embedded DSL. So SSH clients that have like, you know, like common options that you can, <coughs> you may want to like make nice types for them. Uh, other tools that are POSIX that we would want to like, that actually take a string, which is a little language, we would like maybe want to like wrap that thing into a better type, better type thing. So AWK or like said, they take little languages. So you may want to like make something better out of those instead of just passing string. Uh, being able to test on, uh, on Windows, I think with app or now it should be possible to do it for open source projects, but I haven't done it yet. And uh, for the website, for the web demo, <coughs> many of the things that could be improved. Like so far, the, the error messages are like, it's just the error message you get from a camel, just type error and uh, redisplaying the expression. You never actually care about the expression, but you would maybe would like to like part the type the error, like like Emacs does, and give it back to the, to the editor side. It would be easy to like make a ReasonML boost button, like just switches between OCaml and ReasonML syntax. Uh, or having many examples in a menu also would be useful. And uh, I think that's all I have in mind. So thank you. And